It is April 16th, 2021. We are coming to you live from Dante Salon and Wellness Spa at the top of the hill in Old Town, Fairfax, Virginia. I'm Dr. J. Kim. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, since we just turned on the videos, there will be more and more people streaming in. So I'll start with some small announcements. Um, in recent months, um, I've joined the Fairfax Band Association. So if you, uh, if you know a little bit about me, um, you know I enjoy violin, I enjoy music. And so I've been asked to join the Board of Directors at, at the Fairfax Band Association. Obviously, uh, groups like you know, orchestras, bands, theater groups uh, haven't been able to meet during the past year plus because of COVID but doesn't mean that planning is not happening. And I'm sure that when it's safe to come back to some sort of normal where performances come back in places like the Kennedy Center and Wolf Trap, that uh, the Fairfax Band Association will have some great music to show um, to its viewers. So I'm very excited to be joining them and look forward to what the band has to bring um, in the coming season. In other news, I'm also part of the Rotary Club of Fairfax. I've been a Rotary member for just over a year. They are having a golf tournament um, the day after Mother's Day in Fairfax. So if you'd like to know more about that, um, please text our office 703-705-2100 with the word Rotary Golf and we can certainly give you more information to sign up or be a sponsor. In big news, um, we have a new lady joining us at the end of the month. Her name is Corey. She's great. She's a lovely young woman and um, we look forward to having her as a dynamic addition to our team to help grow our practice and help better serve our patients. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, now to the topic of the day, um, which is upper eyelids and how to make them so that they bring out your eyes. Um, today's um, prize will go to a lucky winner. Um, this is a skincare package worth uh, more than $500. In it, uh, you'll start with the Elastin Face Wash. This is a gentle enzyme, enzymatic cleanser. Um, then your workhorse um, skincare product is Restorative Skin Complex. Um, it really helps to lock in the moisture and help um, to improve the elastin fibers that keep your skin young and bouncing back. Okay, and this is my favorite skincare product right now. Well, it's been my favorite skincare product for the last couple of years. It's Elastin Eye Restorative Complex, uh, Restorative Eye Treatment. And basically you apply one pump to the upper and lower eyelids. Uh, they cover both of my upper and lower eyelids with one pump. So a little goes a long way. And then you have your moisturizer. This is to kind of seal everything in. And don't forget your neck. Uh, we have talked about jawline and neck in the past, but this is a neck complex, one of my favorites as well. And so while you do great things for your face, you don't want to forget about your neck. Um, you don't want that to give you away. So all of that, um, please text the word wink to our office, 703-705-2100 for your chance to win this wonderful skincare package. Okay, let's go to upper eyelid surgery. Okay, and when it comes to your eyelids, um, basically what we're, at, what we're gonna talk about is who could use eyelid surgery and what issue basically uh, we would be addressing and to make a change and look nicer and brighter for you. So basically, a lot of my eyelid surgery patients come to me saying that their eyes look small and tired. And in terms of the actual anatomy of that, what that means to me is that there's extra skin between the eyebrow and the eyelid. So between the eyebrow and eyelashes, there's too much skin. And that's what time and gravity does to us over, um, over the long run. There's also an issue oftentimes where the fat that's in the eyelid socket will start to come forward. And now you need fat in your eye socket because it's a cushion for your eyeball. But when the membrane that's holding the fat in the eye socket starts to get weak, your eyelids, eyelid fat starts to come forward. And how that manifests itself is a fat bag either right, above, right next to your nose or 
just above your pupil. Um, and in the lower eyelid, which we've talked about in the past, you'll have three areas of bagginess, one near the nose, one in the middle, and one off to the side. If you have um, eyelid fat coming forward on the lower eyelid, you usually have some in the upper eyelid as well. Okay. Um, for my Asian patients, about half of our Asian uh, population does not have a eyelid crease, so it just kind of folds up randomly when you open your eyes, okay, and that can make your eyelids look small. So for those of people who have no crease, um, the skin actually covers up the eyelashes more, and even for those who do have a crease, the extra skin can lap over that crease and over your eyelashes as well. Okay. So when patients, when I ask patients what are the goals, how would, how would you like your eyelids to look? Um, they say, I want my eyes to look bigger and brighter. Nobody ever tells me that they want their eyes to look smaller. Because bright eyes, you know, they say so much to the world. And since we're wearing masks these days, the first and only thing people see in us is our eyes. So we want our eyes to send a great message, okay? So in addition to bigger and brighter eyes, a lot of people say they want a natural change, and they certainly don't want a hollow change. Now, what can happen over time is that not only can the fat protrude forward, but it can start to thin, and then you get a hollow look, more like a sunken eye look, and that's really not desirable at all either. So, how do we address these issues? Um, anatomically speaking, you know, the main two issues of extra skin lapping over your eyelashes. That is, a, is basically a simple move of remo a task of removing um, just the right amount of upper eyelid skin. And then through that removal of skin, you gain access to the fat and you take a little bit, if necessary, from just next to your nose right here. And if it's bulging out here too, you take a little bit there, okay? So for Asian eyelid surgery, there's a little bit more of a task if you want to create a crease that previously was not there, or if there is not a consistent crease, but multiple like pseudo creases. I'll show you guys some pictures later of people who have who had that issue. Okay, so there's the additional task of making a crease. And that involves a little deeper work. So for people who, uh, for whom I make a crease during their upper eyelid surgery, the swelling can last a little longer. Okay. Um, if you're joining us um, a little bit late, I'm Dr. Jay Kim. I'm a facial plastic surgeon working out of the Washington, D.C. area. Um, I am currently at Dante Salon and Wellness Spa, which is at the top of the hill in Old Town Fairfax on Main Street. Um, eyelid surgery is my favorite surgery. Um, I think it provides a nice change for my patients. It's a really, um, it moves all the time. You know, you're blinking every few seconds, so it's very challenging in terms of getting it just right. And I'm really happy for my patients when we get it just right. Okay, so we talked about this skincare package. Again, if you're just joining us, this is up for grabs. Please text the word WINK to our office number, 703-705-2100 for your chance to win. Okay, so for patients who decide to go undergo upper eyelid surgery, um, there's two things I ask of them. One's a negative COVID test. I won't elaborate too much on that. But the second one, which I absolutely um, you know, require my patients to have, is a clearance from an ophthalmologist. Okay, An ophthalmologist is a doctor, not an optometrist, who will fully examine your eyes and will um, diagnose and or treat any underlying conditions related to your eye health. Some of the things that an ophthalmologist would be able to see and treat are things like a glaucoma, cataracts, other you know, eye-related conditions, whether it's related to the movement of the eyes or the actual vision of the eyes. They also are able to assess how dry or how moist your eyes are, okay? Uh, the old-fashioned way of doing this is putting a paper strip at the corner of your eye. It's called a Schirmer test. And if you make enough tears, enough of that paper will get wet over a period of several minutes, okay? If your eyes are dry, then they'll you know, put, it, put it in as a precaution that your eyes are dry. And I will tell you that after surgery, your eye dryness might make things feel a little itchier, a little more swollen, a little more uncomfortable. But dry eyes in themselves are not a reason to not have surgery. There are other conditions of the eyes that would be a reason not to have surgery, to have the eye condition addressed first. So 
that's the reason why I mandate um, ophthalmology visits prior to eyelid surgery. Okay, so the day of surgery comes and you come to my office. This is where we do the surgery, it's in my office. We give you a couple of medicines to relax and stay ahead of the pain. And then the rest of it is just numbing shots in and around the eyelids. So that day you're awake but comfortable. Okay, you might be a little sleepy and that's perfectly okay if you fall asleep while I'm doing the surgery. But the most important thing is that you're able to um, you're able to open and close your eyes during the surgery when I ask you to. Because especially for Asian eyelids, we want to make sure that things are as symmetrical as they can be. And part of that is examining how your eyes look and move as you open and close your eyes. Okay? During that time, uh, we are able to stream whatever music you would like to listen to. I generally do all kinds of music. I do not prefer to listen to death metal during my surgery because it gets me too amped up. And I don't want to be amped up during your surgery. I'd rather be nice and relaxed, just like the patient would be nice and relaxed. If death metal gets you relaxed, well, that's a different conversation. <laughs> surgery takes about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, if we have to make a crease or do other deeper work for Asian eyelids or for droopy eyelids, um, that's for another time. It will take a little longer, um, but you go home that day and somebody does drive you home. You will not be allowed to ride share home. That's actually illegal. So somebody you trust should be your ride home. Somebody should stay with you that night. If you live alone or, you know, if you, um, whoever lives at home with you should take care of you, you know, tend to whatever you need. And you should be able to eat normal food that night. If you feel a little nauseated, we do have a prescription for that as well. But oftentimes people do just fine. I generally don't need to prescribe pain medication afterwards for my patients. They do just fine with um, a staggering of Tylenol and or uh, ibuprofen, okay? Um, in terms of recovery, recovery, your eyes will feel very swollen for the first week, maybe even two weeks. For non-Asian eyelid surgery, where we don't have to make a crease, and all we do is remove the skin and trim a little fat, um, generally four to six weeks, you'll look as good as new. For patients undergoing deeper surgery um, or a crease surgery, like a double eyelid surgery, um, swollen can last two months, sometimes even a little longer. So two things I ask people to do. We give Arnica tablets in our gift bag for all our surgical patients. So take that regularly as described on the box, as well as eat some pineapple. Pineapple contains an enzyme that we call bromelain, and that helps to decrease bruising and swelling faster. For the first two weeks, Please do not rub your eyes, okay? They will feel itchy as heck sometimes, but please be mindful not to rub your eyes. Um, also, you know, when you're, um, when you're cleaning, when, when uh, we will ask you to clean, and we, you basically mix water and peroxide half and half, and gently run, like, dab it with a Q-tip, and that just helps keep scabbing from building up. Okay. In terms of scarring, this is a pa question that patients often ask. Well, I see the scar. Um, I might have had a keloid or a big scar somewhere else. Um, will this eyelid scar be really noticeable? And the answer is no. Basically, when you open your eyes, your eyelid and the skin under your brow hide the scar. So in no way will this show, not to mention that this is the thinnest skin on the body. So the thinner skin is, the less likely it is to thicken up and make a big scar. Even for a vision, uh, people undergoing a second or third eyelid surgery, it's, it really doesn't happen. Um, so there's really nothing to worry about. Um, even for my darker skin patients, um, an incision right here, I have not seen a keloid yet. Um, that's kind of the it. Um, I'll, I'll show you some before and afters, okay? And this is my favorite surgery to do, and it's very rewarding for patients um, because it only requires an hour, hour and a half of their time. Um, this young lady uh, is in her 30s. She is of Asian descent. Okay, I'm going to tilt this so that everybody can see. This is her before, okay, and you see that the skin is starting to cover her eyelashes a little bit, okay. So this, the middle picture is her about a week after surgery. You can see it's swollen, okay, and then this is about five, six weeks later. Um, as you can see, the crease is well defined. And I think that her eyes look a little bigger. Even though I haven't made her eyes actually bigger, your eye is more drawn to the crease rather than to the lash line. 
So I think this is a very nice result and the patient's very happy. Okay. This is a, a young lady in her late 30s. Uh, she came to me with her eyelids looking like this. She wanted a bit, little bit of finesse. Um, not too much eyelid show. So a lot of my Asian patients say they don't want big, big eyelids. They want a small natural looking change. And so this is her um, one month out. So as you can see, she had an eyelid tattoo pl uh, placed a long time ago. So you wouldn't be able to see that in the before picture, but now you see it because you see her eyelid for real. Okay, and this is her six month picture. Now she's wearing humongous eyelashes, so try to look past them, but you can see there's a small, tiny, nice change that's even on both sides that, you know, people wouldn't ask necessarily, oh, did you have surgery? Because um, it's not really noticeable. And for a lot of people, that's what they like, and I like to help them achieve that goal. Okay? All right. So for a non uh, sorry, for a non-Asian patient, um, this is a young lady, she's uh, close to 30, and she said that she's Caucasian, and she said that her, some of her family tease her for not looking Caucasian, not like them. Um, so what I did for her, actually, if you see very closely, the left inner corner, her eyelid crease meets her inner corner, and the right side, it doesn't. So she wanted that changed. And so this is her about six weeks later, and so I would think I was able to make a nice change for her, mm -hmm. okay? And again, these are not humongous changes, but for a patient who sees this in the mirror and it concerns them, this is absolutely a huge change for them. Um, so at this point, we'll take some questions from the audience. Again, um, text the word WINK to 703-705-2100 and you'll have your chance to win a skincare package worth more than $500. Um. Okay, well we have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, a user asks, can I see clearly after the surgery? After surgery, that day your vision might be a little blurry just because we've injected the area with some um, numbing medicine, but generally you can see pretty clearly after surgery. Um, in terms of being able to move your eyes around, it might feel a little bit tight or a little bit swollen, but yes, you can see very clearly during surgery. Um, if there's a persistent visual change after surgery, um, again, this hasn't happened to any of my patients, but it theoretically could, that's why we have you go to the ophthalmologist for a comprehensive evaluation afterwards. So very good question, thank you for that. Okay, and it seems that there are no more questions. There was one from my Instagram story the other day, um, and I'll read it from Catherine. Is it possible to tighten up the eyelid without creating a double eyelid? Absolutely. So some of my Asian patients who don't have an eyelid crease still don't want an eyelid crease, and that's perfectly okay. Now, if you're able to just remove skin, just like you would a regular um, non-Asian upper eyelid surgery, that's perfectly okay too. Uh, people ask for it sometimes, and so I'm glad to do that for them. Um, but the majority of the Asian patients who come to the office are the ones who want the crease and who want it to show uh, in a natural way. So very good question. And there's another question, what about hollow or sunken eyelids? Um, that is a question more for the, um, more for patients past their 50s and 60s. And so what can happen over time, like I mentioned before, is that the eyes can look deeper set because you lose volume in and around the eye socket. So there are two ways to help change this. One is with filler, and you can use a very thin filler like the ones you use for your lips to actually fill this shadow just above your eyeball. And this is a very um, tricky technique and it requires a lot of finesse and expertise. So make sure you go to an injector who does this pretty regularly. Again, not too many people do this regularly. So it's a, it's a finesse procedure. The other way to help change this is to get fat from somewhere else and inject it into the eye socket like you would um, the filler. Okay, seems that there are no more questions. Dr. Kim, would you like Nala to say hi? Yes, Nala Bear, can you say hi? So our Nala is just past seven months old. Come here, little one. All right. You wanted to jump up here, 
more a little while ago. <laughs> All right, come on, buddy. Yeah. All right. So if you haven't met our mascot, this is Nala. She is our golden doodle. She greets patients at the office, and she's a sweet little bundle of joy. Um, anytime you come to the office, you can ask if she's there, and she will gladly greet you. And uh, she is a golden doodle. She's a tiny bit golden, so mostly poodle. So she's very smart. She's very loyal. She's very playful. Um, all of the great things. So my wife and I are very happy to have her. And look, she's looking back at me like, Dad, where are we getting out of here? <laughs> <laughs> we do have one more question. All right, go ahead. Chong Kim says, can the upper blepharoplasty be done at the same time as lower blepharoplasty? Ah, very good question. So yes, I do these, I do both at the same time for some patients. Um, again, the lower eyelid surgery can be done under local anesthesia as well. So it takes, you know, a little while longer, but you know, it means that you have one recovery time period during which you have a nice change on your upper and lower eyelids. Um, for lower eyelids surgery specifically, we'll go over that at another live in the future, but great question, thank you for asking. Okay. Well, it seems that there are no more questions. Um, okay, again, text uh, WINK to 703-705-2100 for your chance to win an excellent Skincare package valued at over $500. Say bye to Nala. Okay. And I hope everybody is safe and healthy and has a great weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next month.